How you Happy doing? Fair. Good yeah. to see you, sir. Yeah. How you been? I'm good. Did you want me to say? Yes, check your name You're still here. Uh, good morning. Good eye. Swati Kaap. Today's video is going to be a little adventure on uh, a two-day bike ride um, with a group of friends uh, down the Big Sur coast, then over to King City, and then back to Carmel. We're starting at Carmel, Carmel to, to, to Big Sur, over Nascimento Road, Hunter Liggett to King City, King City, and then day two, that's the uh, day one hotel in King City, and then day two, King City back to Carmel via, via Arroyo Seco and Carmel Valley. So. This is a group of friends. Uh, we do this every year in uh, October, November, um, and uh, usually attracts about 60 to 80 riders, and uh, it's a really great group. So we have uh, SAG support. We have a couple of rest stops that uh, everybody brings some food and they set it out at the rest stops. Uh, we've got two rest stops on each day, and uh, day one's about 100 miles, day two is about 70 miles. We stay at uh, Kiefer's Inn in uh, King City, a great hotel. And then uh, uh, also we have a, 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 a gear truck. So the van, we have a van that, you know, everybody brings a duffel bag. So you've got some clothes for the evening and uh, fresh kit for the next day. So uh, let's get started and head down the road. Good morning. Good morning. 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 All righty, so we're just getting underway. 26 miles to Big Sur, 50 to Lucia, and those are our uh, two rest stops. I just realized we actually have three rest stops today. We have Big Sur at mile 26. We've got Lucia at mile 50. And then we've got uh, a Hunter Liggett stop at mile 81. And then King City is at about mile 100. My goodness me, look at that. Look at the sun on the fog over there. Amazing. Morning, right, everybody. Hey there, good morning. Hey, hey. Enjoying the good weather? There are a couple of really picturesque um, arched bridges along this route, and uh, <clears throat> the most famous of them is the Bixby Bridge, which we'll come up on. That's probably the most well-known landmark on this stretch of road. All right, this is the Bixby Bridge. The lighting isn't great right now, but you can get the idea. You can see the arched uh, bridge there. Very picturesque. Actually, in this early light, it probably makes sense to ride up this road a little bit and then get the viewpoint from this side, which is quite a bit nicer. Alrighty, so that was, uh, that was definitely worthwhile taking the time to Take that little side road, get a better view of the bridge. All right, so now we got a little climb. Um, so I started kind of late today. Um, and I've passed probably a half a dozen people. There's quite a mix of riders. Over the course of the day, the 100 miles and the maybe 7,000 feet of climbing, you're gonna have riders that maybe average, slower riders might average 10 to 12 miles per hour, and then faster riders might be more like 16 to 18 and this first stretch kind of rolling there's a couple good climbs but it kind of is rolling down to Big Sur it can be really fast and I've uh, been known to get in a pace line with a group and average better than 20 miles per hour but today <clears throat> I've decided to uh, just plot along, ride alone, my own pace. You don't have to worry about going too hard. And uh, at this point, we're like, uh, let's see, 
we're about 15 miles in and I'm averaging about 15 miles per hour so you know that's fast enough for me Bloody me, I don't know quite what to say. That last section was just so gorgeous. The light, the light today with the clouds and the fog, you know, just made that really incredible. Um, and to think it was supposed to be raining today, I'm just pretty thrilled about this weather. So now after going through that stretch, we've got a kind of a semi-flat stretch. He says as he climbs this hill um, into Big Sur. We're at uh, about mile 20. Big Sur is mile 26, so we'll have a stop there. We are going to meet Charles, don't fuck with Chuck Schroyer, and I'm going to tell you a little story about Chuck. And I think we have enough time to do that now and then I'll introduce him to you. So just to be practical I'm going to tell you a very truncated shortened version of the story about Chuck. So a number of years ago we were doing, I was on this ride and we were doing a uh, 600k, 600 kilometer ride. Uh, it was called the, uh, I think it was called the Antelope 600. The route goes from Davis to north to Quincy and then to a place called Antelope Lake, way out in the boondocks above Indian Valley in California. And then turns around and comes back. And so it's, it's a 600K brevet. And the format is that in a brevet, sorry about all these cars, In a brevet you have, in a 600 kilometer brevet, you have 40, 40 hours to complete it. So that means you have to ride at night. So Chuck was riding along in the middle of the night and comes upon this man and a woman across the road in a pickup truck yelling insults about, uh, which I can't repeat here, to the women, a few women that were riding a little bit of ways in front of Chuck. And so uh, Chuck sees this and then he, uh, guy just passed me and waved. I can see, see it back there. Uh, Chuck hears this and he, he said something to the effect of, you, know, you fuck with them, you fuck with me. And uh, the guy and his girlfriend jump in his pickup truck run Chuck down and run him off the road, you know, cut in front of him so he has to stop and, you know, Chuck is uh, more than happy to stop. Now, guy gets out of the truck and he's a completely drunk meth head, completely high on meth and drunk as can be, and he's got his toothless girlfriend with him. and. Uh, Gets, gets out straight after Chuck. Anyway, 
a brawl ensues. Now, Chuck, uh, let's just say what Chuck lacks in height, he makes up for in girth. And this guy, this meth head, was, uh, let's just say he was outmatched. Chuck beats the crap out of the guy. He's down on the ground. Chuck figures it's over. The guy gets up. He's so messed out and so drunk, he just doesn't feel any pain. He recovers, he gets up, he comes at Chuck again. This happens three or four more times. And it just keeps, Chuck's, Chuck's, he can't believe that this guy keeps coming back. I mean, he's, he gets the living crap beat out of him multiple times but just keeps coming back for more. So eventually the girlfriend realizes that her boyfriend's in trouble. She gets in the truck and backs up and then drives, she tries to run over Chuck. Chuck sees it coming, he jumps out of the way. Girl runs over her boyfriend, literally runs him over. Not under the tires, mind you, but he just, he just gets knocked down and he's, stuck under the truck, but he's kind of, he's dazed, but he's kind of okay. Uh, so he crawls out, stumbles out, goes after Chuck again. But at this point, he's just, you know, he's wasted. He's, he's done. So eventually, oh, in the, in the melee, the girlfriend ran over Chuck's bike and just, you know, ruined it. So he can't continue. He calls the cops. Cops come, take a report. They find this guy. <clears throat> and uh, anyway, he eventually goes to trial and gets convicted. But you know, he's probably been in and out of jail a hundred times. But uh, so after that, I thought it appropriate to give Chuck the nickname Charles Don't Fuck With Chuck Schroyer. So there it is now. To go into Big Sur here, we'll, uh, we'll meet Chuck. And unfortunately, I've chosen to tell the story when there's a headwind. So I've got a good bit of uh, wind on my lapel mic, so I don't know. I hope the audio is okay or just passable. All right, here's our rest stuff. And there's Chuck, right there. So then they came after me. So they had a big write up in the Davis oh. Bike Club. When was so. that? That was uh, seven years ago. The guy just got out of jail, got out of prison. Oh. Holy smokes, yeah. you're a hero, man. Yeah. Yeah. Chuck, I was just, <laughs> it's funny, I was just telling that story. Oh, were you? I was. <laughs> and then I was saying, oh, an old man, too. Yeah. And I was trying to remember everything. I, th I think I got it about right. Yeah. Well, I didn't remember what happened to the guy, and you just said he, 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 he just got out of prison. He yeah. was in prison for six years for doing that for that uh, for first he month. was out on parole at the time so they they made him uh, um, go back to jail and serve the rest of his sentence okay so he had yeah. he had prior yeah. stuff and so then that, she uh, she pleaded guilty and uh, had to pay restitution so I got a check for two and a half years from her Oh. Every month I got a check for $120. To, to pay your bike off, right? Or whatever. They never asked me about it. Oh, because your, yeah. your bike got destroyed, right? Yeah. Yeah. But it, I took it over to Slough's and uh, it cost me $200 to have it repaired. Okay. They straightened the frame and uh, respoke the wheels. And yeah. All fine. And that was the Antelope 600K, right? Antelope 600K. Yeah. And what year was that? 2015 or? Yeah, I don't know. Six years, seven years ago. Yeah, I, I think it was. Yeah. That, was a, that was an interesting uh, yeah. yeah. I once in a while have nightmares about it. Yeah. It comes back. So. so the guy 
there was a point at which you had you had beat the crap out of him several times. He kept getting up, right? He got up uh, probably four times, and uh, you know he got ran over twice. He got a crushed foot, probably a couple broken ribs. Uh, all the skin was ripped off his back. He got dragged 30 feet across the road underneath the car. And you had gotten out of the way of the car, right? You, you, yeah, you, yeah. You, jumped, you jumped out of the I way. I jumped out of the way, yeah. yeah. The only thing I had, and I had a bump on my head where he hit me so hard it exploded my helmet. And then when I had him up against the car, she came out the window and hit me on the stomach. <laughs> the stomach? I had a big bite on my I didn't even know about it until I took a shower that night. So. And you said you have, you're trained in... Uh, uh, Cholin Fa, which is uh, Chinese martial arts. Okay. Yeah, and then I fought a uh, competition uh, full contact under Ashan Tao, yeah. which is a uh, uh, another type of yeah. Chinese martial arts. And w was this guy, What? how big was he? Was he just like a not, not a big guy? Skinny? He was a little bit bigger than you. Okay, a bit skinny. Than you. No, about the same as you. Okay. And, uh, but when he hit me, I, I realized right off the bat, because I walked up to him and he swung at me. I just put my head down and he hit my helmet and I knew right then he had no idea what he was doing. Yeah. Yeah. That took him out. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Well, it's funny because I was telling that story and I, I, I rolled up on my bike and you, you, you yeah. like, somehow it came up with these other yeah, people. Yeah, the Chuckasaurus is because uh, Davis Bike Club started calling me the old fighting dinosaur. Okay, so that's... I'm an old man. So, so somebody asked you about that yeah. and then, yeah, yeah. all right. Yeah. Awesome, man. The kid's about 25 years old and I was about 65. Yeah. And uh, it was funny because he's sitting there next to me. The paramedics are working on him. They got him in handcuffs, and he turns to me and goes, How the fuck old are you? <laughs> really? Uh, yeah, I go, Well, I'm 65. You know, you're a mean motherfucker. <laughs> That's great, yeah, man. Yeah. All right. Fun trip. Yeah. Yeah. All right, man. It's kind of a trip. Uh, when I rolled up to the rest stop there, Chuck was already talking to somebody else about that story I had told, and uh, <clears throat> he pointed out that <clears throat> there is a link to his story as he wrote it up, and uh, I will, he says you can just search Antelope Lake 600K, and it'll come up, but I'll find the article, and I will put a link to the uh, article in the description below this video and one thing I will say is that I'm certain that when I go back and read the story I'm going to realize that I didn't get all the details right and uh, so my my recollection of the events may be different than the reality but a little bit maybe but I can promise you that my version is, if anything, less spicy than reality. How far are you guys going? You don't know? I mean, for your whole trip. Did you head down the coast for a while? Limited amount of information there. So, we're at mile. 33 now and next stop is at Lucia, Lucia mile 50 and then after that we do the big climb of the day Nascimento Road. Stopped at a viewpoint here with about 15 miles to go to uh, Lucia that last clip was looking north, and now this is looking to the south. This is an incredibly beautiful spot at uh, Julia Pfeiffer Burns State Park. It's right by the side of the road. You can look down at this little cove and beach right here. It's incredible. Howdy, kids. Howdy, howdy. Oh, really good. I don't know if you made them. They might have, like, 
<laughs> this is the video actually. Oh. I want to ask you how many how many years this uh, tour has been going on? Uh, this is the 28th annual, but there was a couple years that we took off. How many years did we miss? Two. Two years. In 28 years? Okay. Because I was trying to tell my friend, I, I, I told her I've been doing it for 20 something years, yeah. but I couldn't remember how many. She was trying to talk John into doing it. How many? Uh, good yeah. for you. You've probably done more than anyone else. Yeah. Maybe. Well so, how did, how did the idea come about? Um, Mike and I were getting married, and he wanted to do one last bachelor by Craig, and uh -huh. this is it. This was a bachelor. It started off as a bachelor, right? You didn't do and it. And it was like, no, I went, I went too. But you, and it was like 10 of us, and we supported ourselves out, out of my Volkswagen Rabbit. Well, there you go. <laughs> All right, so that was uh, rest stop number two. And uh, I got to meet Kim there, the organizer and uh, originator of this great ride 28 years ago. And uh, so that was cool. Um, a few more miles and then we got the big climb of the day. We're gonna leave the coast, head inland on Nascimento Road, which is a climb of about th nearly 3,000 feet, a little shy of that. <laughs> which is about 900 meters in about seven miles or 11 kilometers. <laughs> so, Quite a hard climb with some very steep sections, but we'll get up it okay. It, it climbs very steeply from the coast, which is nice because you really can look from, from, from the upper parts of the road, you can look down and have a great view of the coast. And also my favorite campground of all time, which is Kirk Creek here along, and it's just right at the base of the Nascimento climb. So we're gonna be there in oh, another five miles or so. So for now, we're just uh, cruising down the coast. It's looking good. I don't know if you can see that over my shoulder, but we just passed Lucia and um, this had burned down a while ago. The store's been closed for years, but uh, now there's that there's taco stand there. So be a good option of course you never know when it's going to be open or how long it's going to be there but for now get some food there a lot of highway one in this area in big sur <clears throat> is notoriously unstable and so every few years there's a <clears throat> there's a big rain wet season <clears throat> there's often a big landslide that takes out the road and sometimes it's closed for a long time and that sort of tunnel structure that we just went under that was an area that has a lot of rock falls and whatnot, so they built that tunnel thing to uh, alleviate that problem. If you look over there in the distance, you can see some uh, vehicles kind of glistening, shining there a little bit, and that is Kirk Creek Campground, which is one of my favorite campgrounds ever. It's just beautiful, right on the bluff above the water. Short little hiking trail down to the little beach down there. And uh, after this tour, if all goes well, I'm going to try to get down there and camp for a night or two. Okay, there's the gate. I was able to ride around it on the, my left side, holding the camera, but I didn't have it on. So um, anyway, so Kirk Creek Campground. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about that as we head up here. So there's another campground, 11 miles, and another, another one more at 13 miles. I'm just starting to climb here, gentle at first. There's even a short little downhill section, and then it gets really steep. So Kirk Creek Campground is one of those national forests 
campgrounds and you can book it on recreation.gov and I would tell you that it's one of those campgrounds that books up like you know six months in advance as soon as they open the days they get booked but there are frequently cancellations so if you check a week before a couple days before and then if they're not booked three days or so out they're first come first serve so you can come in at you know checkout time noon or whatever and potentially grab one and there is another campground down the street down down the street down the highway a few miles called Plaskett Creek I think and that one generally has spots so if you don't get in Kirk Creek you can try your luck at that one chances are much better so anyway here we are leaving the lovely coastline and heading straight up into those steep hills up in there. This is the little downhill section and pretty soon it's going to be both hands on the bars climbing a steep hill. All right, uh, this grade here is probably close to 15 percent and we very quickly are rising above the ocean there making the progress oh man okay as we climb up the road there's your pompous grass that's not a native plant but it's all over anyway you can see up the road looking north and if you look down there you can see the lovely Kirk Creek campground. Uh, here's another 15 percent or so. Time to put the phone away. All right, so working my way up this thing, it's uh, probably two thirds of the way up, and uh, grades are a little gentler here. Um, I forgot to mention that Nascimento Ferguson Road is closed to automobiles. That's why there was that closed gate at the bottom and um but the locals the locals use the road and they have a key to the gate now the reason it's closed is it had some storm damage a number of years ago and it has been deemed unstable so they just want to keep the public off it and minimize the chances of it getting worse but it rides Okay, there are a few potholes and some debris in the road, but otherwise it's pretty good going. So there you have it. Looks like I've got, oh man, maybe two and a half miles more to go. And it's not easy, but there you can see down, see all the way down to the fog bank there and even see the water from uh, where we started. All right, I'm gonna carry on. Oh, finally made the summit. Here we go down. Well, as you can see, the terrain has uh, changed quite a bit here. We're out in the Hunter Liggett Army Base. And uh, we're inland now, so you can see how dry and brown it is, which is normal for California this time of year, but the rains will come in the next month or two, and this will all turn green and stay that way till April or May of next year. So I'm at mile 72 now. The final rest stop's mile 81, so we just have more of this kind of terrain that we're on right now flat rolling for another nine miles and then we'll stop at the rest stop we're gonna see Chuck again what should I have <laughs> all right so that was a nice stop and big thanks again to Chuckasaurus for uh, 
setting up the rest stop. He had to, since the Nascimento Road is closed, he had to man that last stop, the first stop, and make sure, and then drive all the way around to here and uh, set up this stop. So, pretty nice. He just comes out to volunteer. Volunteer his time to help the riders. Ouch. The last several miles have been a false flat uphill with uh, pretty stiff headwinds, so pretty rough going. We're at about mile 90 now, so another 10, 10 ish to go. Although I think I'm told the route's not 100 miles, it's 104 or something like that. So, ah, definitely feeling it. All right, coming into King City now. There's this uh, little bike path thing you gotta take. Oh boy, Sandy Sandy. The last, oh man, as they got close to King City, the wind was brutal. All right, time to check in. So it's a crowded night. Let's check it out. Home sweet home. Kiefer's Inn. Nice place. Oh boy, time for a shower. After ride pool social. Good morning, everyone. Good eye. We're uh, gathering here in King City, getting ready for our ride to uh, Carmel, and uh, it's actually drizzling, and I think it's due to fog mostly. But uh, we're prepared to get a little wet today, but uh, hopefully things will clear out a little bit later. So we're gonna get on the road here pretty soon, and. We have a great day. All right, here we are leaving King City out of the farmland. Got myself on a little train on Craig and Kathy on the tandem in front. And then Kevin and that's Lita taking back in. Run down this front. No, Kevin is. There are a lot of people up here all over the top of the Or off of Skyline somewhere. Yeah. He must um, work now and help you. What's up, Kevin? rolling up Carmel Valley Road, that's what this is called, right? And there is uh, Lita. Lita. Lita leading the way. And I realize now why I didn't uh, ever catch you guys yesterday. <laughs> okay, now I'm on the uh, climb of Carmel Valley Road. This road is amazing. It's just really quiet, no cars. Uh, very pretty. And it's a long, gradual climb, and then, howdy, and then, uh, and at the end, it kicks up and there's like a pretty good climb of a couple miles or so that's fairly steep. You can see I'm climbing up, 
beautiful lighting again today. Another great day. Today I've had some wheels to follow for a good part of it, so making a little bit better progress. But the uh, group I was just with dropped me, so got a little time to make a short clip here. So here we are at the rest stop at the top of Cal Carmel Valley Road. We're about 2,100 feet. Here comes Lita. That's looking back toward uh, the rail segment in King City. Take it around this way to the north. This road will take us back to Carmel. So that's where we're going. summit along the way. It's mostly downhill. We've got to shed that 2,000 feet that we gained. And uh, we'll be going back down into the trees again here shortly, but this is a nice view of the hills around the uh, Carmel Valley area. All right, so we're going to take a little detour here on uh, Kachagua Road. And uh, if we go straight here, that takes us straight back to um, Carmel. And we're going to turn left here. And this is actually Tassajara Road. And that'll take us to Kachagua Road where we'll turn right. And uh, there's a big very steep climb there on a very narrow one lane road but it's it's quite beautiful so i usually do this variation on the ride all right so i'm cruising on Cachagua road now quiet little road it's really pretty um it was pretty cold back there and i just got into a little bit of sun so i've got the courage to break out the camera with the cold fingers and uh, going up a little bump here, a little climb. So it's a nice cruise through the first part of the road and then you get to a point where there's a really nasty little steep climb up to the summit and then a wicked descent back down to Carmel Valley Road. So that's what we're gonna do next. All right, climbing up Cachagua. We're about 12% here. Goes up to probably above 15% in a few places. Hang on, gotta shift. There we go. A little better gear. And then toward the top, kind of opens up. You get some nice views. You can see around this corner, it kicks up a bit. And, uh, Maybe there's Lita up there. Kevin's right in front of her. All right, so this is the last bit 
of road into Carmel Valley. And as you can see, as you get closer to Carmel Valley, the road widens up, it's super busy. It's just straight. It's not, not as pretty and uh, as the other part, earlier parts, but you know, you look at the ride as a whole, there's really very few junk miles. So I'm at mile 63 now. I think the end is like 71 or 72. And uh, just gonna roll into Carmel Valley now. Alrighty, well, that's a wrap. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please uh, like, uh, subscribe, comment, and all that. And uh, uh, until next time, thanks for watching.